Is too much of your time being consumed by stuff that's secondary, not primary? Do you need to make some tweaks so you can have maybe more time to focus on what matters most? This podcast is brought to you by Blackbee Ministries International. To find out more, visit blackbee.org. Welcome to the Richard Blackaby Leadership Podcast. My name is Sam Camp, and I'm your host, and I'm joined at the desk by Dr. Richard Blackaby. Great to be with you, as always, Sam. It's a pleasure, Richard. Uh, we are taking some time to look through some of your writings uh, from, from the past, and a uh, great book on leadership that you and your dad wrote a few years back, Spiritual Leadership. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've touched on some of the principles found therein before. Uh, but before we dive in um, on the topic today, I'll just remind folks that we have um, a few opportunities to attend a Blackaby Spiritual Leadership Coaching Workshop. Um, and you can find out more about those upcoming workshops uh, at blackabycoaching.org. Mm-hmm. I will just mention quickly, we have one coming up in Jonesboro, Georgia, uh, October 28th to 30th. And uh, you can use code EARLYBIRD uh, between now and the end of September to get $100 off registration. Obviously, we'll leave links to that in the show notes, but it's a, it's a great time of, of challenge, of growth, uh, of putting new tools in your leadership tool belt, um, as it were. And uh, yeah. anybody that works with people, I, I think it is worthwhile uh, going through uh, one of our... Uh, uh, coaching workshops. Yeah. So I'll and just... we and we do them uh, sometimes uh, once a year. Usually in the spring, we do one up in the northern part of Atlanta and Johnson's Ferry Baptist Church. Uh, yeah, it's always great up there. Had a great group last spring, but uh, uh, but this one is is at our church, home church in yeah. South Atlanta, not too far from the airport, and so uh, it lets us have a, 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 the a, more of our staff involved. Uh, it's easier for me to drop in and speak and. Uh, be a part of it as well. And so uh, if you just really want to get the full experience uh, on our home turf, teaching leader, uh, leadership coaching, then yeah. this is this is the place to do it. Yeah. And like I said, we'll leave links to that in the show notes. Uh, but today we've got on the schedule, schedule. A schedule. A nice, nice segue there. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Richard. Chapter nine of our book, Spiritual Leadership. And again, I uh, we've shared this before, but uh, what I love about uh, that particular book is that leadership has really been my field. It's been my focus. Uh, and uh, and so I've read a ton of books on leadership, a ton of books on uh, biographies of leaders. And, and this book enabled me especially just to pull all the best stuff from the best books, the best biographies, the best insights. And so it's just chock full of... Uh, all the the stuff that uh, I, I had really liked and been impressed with, and uh, uh, and that I've taught over the years, and so really, if you've never read Spiritual Leadership, and uh, or, and or maybe you got the older version uh, and not the newer one that was revised uh, about a decade later, I encourage you to do that. But we're gonna uh, we're, we're we've been looking at just some of the chapters in there, and chapter nine is called The Leader's Schedule, Doing What's Important. Uh, Peter Drucker, one of the gurus of, of leadership, had said, uh, effective executives, in my observation, do not start with their tasks, they start with their time. And, uh, and that challenged me because I often would start with my tasks, uh, day, in, certainly in each day, uh, and uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to list the things you need to get done in, in a day, but... But he said, before you start listing all the, the tasks that you want to get done, uh, first examine your time. What, what time? If I've only got two hours open today <clears throat> that, that's not tied up in meetings or whatever else, uh, I need to think in terms of the best use of those two hours. It, it doesn't matter if you have a list of 20 things you need to get done. It's, uh, if, okay, if I've got two hours or I've got eight hours or 10 hours, um, what is it? that I can get done in that time and what then what are the most important things to get done uh, uh, you know sometimes uh, when I've got a list of 10 things on my to-do de- list uh, I may knock off several of the less important ones just because I can get them done quickly and, and knock them off right away uh, but 
but the problem sometimes is if you have limited time, then you, you're going to run out of time before you get to the important, crucial ones. Mm-hmm. And so, so he says, start with your time. And, uh, and we mentioned in this chapter that uh, uh, many of, uh, of the world's famous leaders have been very aware of their time or the, the limited time they had. And of course, uh, it almost seems unjust, but uh, the world's greatest leaders do not have a second more time in their day than the world's worst leaders. Uh, the people who are getting lots of things done don't have any more time than the people getting nothing of significance done. And so when when God is using you and, and you're getting things done, you're accomplishing much, you're solving problems, uh, you 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 tend to really value the time that you have. And, uh, and I know there's times when I'm getting a lot of stuff done and I'll look at the clock and I'll think, oh my goodness, it's almost, uh, almost lunchtime already. <laughs> and I, I've been getting lots done, but I've got so much more I still want to want to do. And I'm half the day, the work day has passed already. Um, so, uh, I've got to, I've, I've got to be keenly aware of how I'm using my time. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's interesting, apparently Napoleon, uh, told his generals, you can ask of me anything you wish, except of my time. Uh, and apparently he recognized, I can give you money, I can give you men, give you weaponry, uh, but what's most valuable of all to me is my time. And so just don't waste my time. Uh, mm-hmm. Harry Truman, there's, there, there's kind of an interesting study where they, they uh, historians examined pictures of Truman's desk in the Oval Office and uh, Every year, there was more and more clocks sitting on his desk. And now, that might have partly been just people giving him gifts of clocks that he sat on his desk. <clears throat> but uh, historians also feel like he also knew that his time was limited, that he only could be the president uh, so long, and there's only so much he could get done. And one day, he'd pack up all those clocks and move out of that office and never have that power, that position again. And so in that limited time that he had, how could he make the greatest positive impact? And so I I think that's not necessarily a bad uh, sense for leaders uh, is to realize I only will have my health for so long. I'll only be in this position so long. I'll only be young so long. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll only have these creative ideas flowing through my head uh, for so long. And so what? how can I best get the maximum impact and use out of that. And so we listed several things in terms of taking control of your time. And of course, you can't make time, but you can, you, you can manage your time. Time's going to be passing by just as quickly, uh, but you can learn how to make the, the most use of that time. And, and I think that's, uh, that, that always amazes me about leaders because I'll find some leaders and, it seems as if really they've gotten very little done. I mean, they've been in meetings, they've held an office, uh, but you look around and you and you just see so much that's been left undone still. And then there's other people that it just seems like they're constantly accomplishing more things and making significant changes and coming up with great new ideas and implementing them. And And you just think, why is it that some people seem to master their time so much more effectively and get so much more done than others? Uh, and, uh, and I, you know, I've, I've, I remember I used to, uh, when I w- I've led in different organizations, and, uh, and some people would come and, I mean, in just very short amount of time, they're starting to excitedly tell you about everything that they've done and new opportunities they've they've begun and uh, things they fixed. And then someone else comes along and they tell you they need more time. <laughs> Just haven't had enough time yet. And it's like, yeah. well, it, you start to wonder, uh, is it really the case some people just needed more time or that they just needed to make better use of their time? And so a couple of things we list is, uh, one, just leaders subjugate. And what we mean by that is just basically they have priorities and they figure out uh, if it's not uh, crucial, if it's not essential, then let's subjugate that down to things that are important. Let, let's let the most important things bubble to the surface. And and time management is not primarily about how much stuff you can pack into the day, kind of like uh, a suitcase. And you can still, can I cram one more 
you know, shirt in, yeah. in that suitcase. If I sit on the suitcase, can I get it to close and do up the zipper? Uh, that, that's not, you know, and it used to be that that was kind of the way leaders looked at time is how much can I pack into this day? Can I squeeze one more activity, one more phone call into this day? Uh, but that's not really the way you measure uh, time management as well. It's really more, did I get the important stuff done? Mm. Because I could have gotten dozens of unimportant things done. Uh, that doesn't make me an effective leader. The, the effective leader gets the crucial stuff done. Uh, walks away and knows all the important problems were addressed and the important opportunities were seized. So uh, just subjugate uh, your your time by saying, if I don't get anything else done today, what must I get done? What must I do? Uh, and and then secondly, leaders eliminate. Um, that is, they they clear out of their schedule things that are not important. And that is the curse of time and leadership is that there will always be unimportant activities and, and, and concerns that bombard you. And, uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, I think when you're a leader like I am, uh, you just think, well, let me just plow into a bunch of this busy work yeah. and, and, and knock a bunch of it off my plate. But the problem is the next day it's your plate's full again with busy work. Uh, yeah. It just has a relentless way of bombarding you uh and so at a certain point you've just got to say what what needs to be eliminated from my schedule uh and we've talked a lot about this before but uh it, it could be commitments you, you serve on a dozen committees and so you're busily running from meeting to meeting and you've got a bunch of phone calls and i and i battle this all the time i'm, I'm traveling a lot um speaking a lot and there's there'll be people that just they really want to talk to you on the phone and it's not that you know it, and it's not necessary they they really want to take 30 minutes on the phone to tell you something that they could put in a text uh yeah and, but 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 it's going to kill 30 minutes of your time instead of 30 seconds of your time reading that information and adjusting to that reality uh, and so sometimes you just have to eliminate that and say, you know what, I've got, I'm, I'm spending way too much time doing, uh, taking phone calls that it, it's, it's one thing if, if, if sometimes a phone call is necessary, if you need to actually connect heart to heart, you need to really hear what's going on in a person's mind and thoughts. Uh, but if it's, if it's just conveying information, uh, I just, he just needs to know what time I'm landing at the airport so he can pick me up. Yeah. We don't need to have a 30-minute heart-to-heart about that. I just tell them, 2.30 on Delta, here's the number. Uh, uh, follow, you know, use FlightAware, and you'll know if I'm delayed or not. Uh, but, um, but, and, and so leaders are constantly eliminating that. Uh, George Marshall, we did a biography on him recently. It said that he could distinguish what was important from what was unimportant, and this made him invaluable. Uh, leaders who understand and recognize what is most important to get done. And, and there are times where I'll see people that are very excited about finishing several projects, but they're all tweaks. They're, they're not critical things. They're just tweaks that they got done. And yeah. uh, they're, they're secondary. It's not like they're totally unimportant, but they're secondary. Uh, and I would say if day after day, week after week goes by and you're, and you're accomplishing secondary work, uh, then maybe you need to eliminate some of those tasks uh, and and some of those time commitments so you've got time to do the primary things. Uh, a third thing is that they just they cultivate, and by that we mean cultivate habits, routines. Peter Drucker, again, a leadership guru, he was speaking of routine, and he said, routine makes unskilled people without judgment capable of doing what it took near genius to do before. Um, and, uh, uh, because, uh, sometimes you may not even have thought deeply about why this must be done, but you just know that when you do these things, uh, there's success, there's progress. And so, uh, and we've talked about this before, just the value of routines. It, it, it saves a whole lot of time that you don't have to even think about stuff. Uh, if you know that every morning you're going to start by, getting up and going for a 5k run to exercise or every morning you're going to get up and spend an hour reading your bible right after you make your your coffee 
uh, then you don't have to try to think every day and organize yourself. Your, your body is just, as soon as your feet hits the floor out of bed in the morning, you're in motion. You, you, you know what to do. Your body can be an automatic pilot and just uh, do it because that's your routine. And so I found, of course, you know, some, some people's days can be very different. For me, if I'm on the road, it's a different kind of day than if I'm at home. Mm-hmm. And so you might have to have a couple of different kinds of routines, but, uh, uh, but, and I find even when I'm traveling now that, uh, uh, you know, when you're packing up toiletry bags and luggage and moving to this hotel room or that, it can be very easy to lose things. Uh, I, I was constantly losing my, maybe my shampoo or whatever in the, in the, in the bathtub of my hotel room because I didn't have a routine. How, how can I, what can I do so I, you know, just don't leave stuff in the closet or in the, in the drawer of the dresser. Uh, you, you can, it can drive you crazy. And so you, you start to just, even as a traveler, you'll, those who travel know you have to have routines even with that. Uh, and just to save time. So you don't have to turn around and go, buy more stuff because you yeah. left it in the hotel room, whatever. So um, just for time's sake, you you, you develop uh, effective routines that just allow you. And, and, that, and so what I find is I may be well into my morning routine and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning, but I've already knocked off a ton of stuff uh, because I just, I knew exactly what I was going to do when I got up. And I'm still not even totally awake yet, but I've already gotten a couple of important things taken care of yeah. in place. Uh, and so a fourth thing is just leaders delegate. And that we, we all know that leaders need to do that, but I can tell you, uh, especially ineffective leaders who don't get a lot done, uh, they tend to have held on to stuff that they should have given away. Uh, and I know some, some people uh, just feel that it, it's almost lazy, uh, if, if I just don't do all the work myself, they were just taught to work hard. Uh, but you got to understand, you, either you can be a hard worker or you can be a good leader. Good leaders, you don't measure good leadership by how hard you're working, but by how much you're getting other people to do, how, how effective you're getting other people to, to do their jobs and, and how hard they're working. Uh, and so just as a rule of thumb, uh, if you can give, if you're a leader, uh, if you can give something away, if someone else could do that job as well or almost as well as you, then uh, then you're almost obligated to give it away. And the problem also for some leaders is that they're they're fearful, they're insecure. And well, what if I give uh, this job to Sam and then he does it better than I was? And everybody says, "Wow, have you seen how well Sam does that? Why was, why was Richard, you know, videoing things before, <laughs> taking pictures before?" Uh, and so, if we're insecure, we'll just hold on to everything so that nobody compares. Uh, or we, we're afraid if we give stuff away, what if I don't have enough to do myself? What if people start to think that I'm I'm redundant because I could give all my stuff away to people who could do it better and, and they could just let me go. But, uh, but what I found is if you're an effective leader, you will always have things to do. Uh, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be able to do what you are, are still doing better or you'll have time now to look into the future and start doing some new things that you didn't have time to do before. Uh, so I've never been afraid. I've, you know, I've never lacked things to do my entire leadership career. I've never just sat there and worried I wouldn't have enough to do. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's always uh, wow. Now I've been thinking about starting this or doing that, and now maybe I've I've created the time. I've given enough away, uh, and and it's always a joy when you see people you've delegated stuff to excitedly coming to you and telling you about the innovations that they've come up with and how they've yeah. solved this problem that you never had time to. And, and you start to realize, I should have delegated that a long time ago. Yeah, uh, There's some people with fresh ideas and skills and perspectives that could have done a much better job if I'd just given it away earlier. Yeah, not only does the job that you were doing poorly get done better, but it also frees you up to do the thing you're meant to do yeah. better as yeah. well and so it's sort of a a two for one you're you know you're, not only are you improving those the lesser tasks but you're also f freeing up the headspace or the schedule 
to to do those things that you're meant to be doing yeah. at, and a certainty, at a much higher level. And certainly in our culture today, with technology uh, and uh, the world being so networked, one of the things leaders have got to be able to do is just creatively think and evaluate and look to the future and and creatively get a different perspective maybe on some problems that the organization is facing. And that takes that takes some bandwidth. If you're if you're just packed full of busy activity all day long, you don't have time to be creative. You don't have time to be innovative. You're just trying to find the quickest solution to get this thing moved down the road a bit. But mm-hmm. uh, but all of a sudden, if you've got some time to, to give some focused attention to some things, it's amazing how much more effective that will be for the organization. And so leaders have to always be aware of what is it that only I can do or I'm primarily tasked with doing. Uh, and do I have enough time to do those things well? Because others could do these other things, but I've got to be able to do this well. And if I'm not doing it well, uh, maybe I need to give some things away. And I, I've seen pastors that way. They, they've got to be able to preach on Sunday. But, uh, and no one else is going to do that for them. The usher is not going to get up and preach their sermon for them. Uh, but they've been so busy mowing the church lawn and helping clean up the bathrooms and straightening out chairs and doing other things that uh, they get up half prepared to do the one thing that only they can do. And there's things they could have delegated away. They could have enlisted other leaders, but they didn't. And now they're doing a, just a second-rate job at what yeah. their people desperately need them to do well. And so uh, learning to delegate is crucial for a leader. And it's not something you do one time. It's something that you're constantly looking. And you're, and you're watching for talent. And, 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 and there are people that have been faithful in a little, uh, serving in your organization, and it's, they're ready to be given more. And what a great reward when you maybe give something important that you have been doing up to that point and you entrust it now to someone else who's been faithful and they're ready for a bigger assignment. And then the, the fifth thing is just leaders concentrate. And that is uh, you can't do great work with hurried thinking. Mm. Uh, if you're rushing from thing, uh, uh, task to task, uh, thought to thought, uh you're, you're not going to give it your best when you're in a hurry, when you're stressed, when you've already got your eye on the next thing you've got to get done. Uh, you're just trying to check the box. Uh, I find that there's times where I'm just trying, I just got to crank this out. I've got to meet this deadline. Uh, but you know full well that if you'd had more time, more focus, it would have been a much more quality product that you produced. And you just hate that when, uh, when you're not able to do your best. And so uh, Peter Drucker he had an interesting uh, suggestion. That was, he just said, leaders uh, need to not break down their time into too small of increments. Like he didn't like 15-minute you know, increments in a leader's schedule. He, he liked hour-long uh, uh, slots. Uh, he said, if, you've got, if, you, if you're scheduling your work by the hour, uh, then you've got adequate time uh, to really think things through, to be creative, to process, to, to focus. Um, and, and so, of course, if, if there's a job, he, he would say if there's a job you can do in 15 minutes, then you could probably delegate it to someone else so that the, the big jobs, the big tasks, that re- and, and sometimes those tasks mean going and having lunch for an hour with a key report, a vice president or something, uh, or just taking uh, the whole afternoon to just think into the future. Where are we going? What are the, what are the things we're going to need uh, in the coming days? And are we prepared? And so he would say, focus. And, I, and I've found that, uh, and certainly as I get older, uh, and you got so many things swirling about in your head, uh, that, that, that it, it, it's so powerful when, a, when an experienced uh, leader actually takes time to concentrate and to focus and to contemplate what what is it that uh where we're still dropping the ball what i know things are maybe going pretty well here but let me let me look below the surface and consider how maybe a little tweak or adjustment here there might make things even better and then just a few things to say about just uh positive things uh and again we don't have time in this uh podcast but uh don't don't get too uptight about balance uh 
in the book, we kind of ask, did Jesus live a balanced life? Uh, there are times where he's so exhausted that even a storm at sea doesn't wake him up. Uh, yeah. He's uh, he's having to pray through the night because he didn't have time during the day. But uh, he's meeting with people in the night because he's been around crowds all during the day. Uh, and so, you, you know, you have to be kind of careful with that. But but you can schedule uh, some things, and, and uh, four things we would just say to be sure to schedule. One is just schedule unhurried time with God, and, uh, and to say, where in my, my day can I put enough time, uh, carve it out, keep it uh, uh, sacred, that, that uh, I can spend time with God and not feel rushed. And that might mean you get up at four in the morning. That might mean uh, that you go from uh, 10 till 11.30 at night. But uh, where, where is the time I schedule where I can give God the time that he deserves as, as God? And secondly, just schedule regular quality time with family. Uh, and, you know, one thing I've tried to do, Sam, you, you're part of this, but uh, certainly there are certain seasons in my schedule during the year that get really crazy. But, but if possible, I try to to book maybe a week uh, at the beach here, a week at the, in the mountains or something. And so there's times where I'll just have to say, even to my my grandkids, you might not see me that much. I think I'm, I might miss uh, grand, grandparent day, uh, but uh, I'm gonna be, for a week I've carved out to be with you at the, at the ocean. And so mm-hmm. uh, there's just times where you say, I, I can't necessarily schedule time every week where I'm always available, but, uh, but I, but I will put on my calendar and then guard that so that I know I've got that time. Uh, but just finding ways. I uh, there's a couple of days a week that uh, well, lately we here we've we've caught several of your daughter's ballet uh, practices mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. just trying to think. Well, you know what? That's later in the day. I can just take a break at that point and uh, drive over with my wife and just drop in and see the grandkids and help our, my daughter out and. Uh, and, and just trying to find ways in your schedule to say, uh, today I'm going to go pick up my, my twin grandsons from school just to give that, my, their parents a break and give the kids a break. Uh, and I, I can't necessarily always do that, but, uh, but always kind of aggressively looking at your schedule to say, what can I put on? I, I've told uh, your wife, my daughter, to soon as that ballet performance, year-end performance is scheduled, I need that on my calendar. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's a day I'm in town and I'll, I'll guard it carefully once I know when it is. Uh, and then just thir- a third thing, just schedule time for your health. Uh, schedule time to exercise. Schedule time to rest. Schedule time just to get a- enough sleep. Schedule some downtime where you're not just pushing hard all the time. And no one else is obligated to do that for you. That's something you have to schedule. Uh, and uh, sometimes that can be hard. Uh, but you've got to say, I can, I've, I can only go so long without uh, putting some of this on my schedule. Uh, I, you know, I, I'll tend to take uh, the month of August and say, I just need to stay out of as much business travel as I can that month. And just to slow down a bit. Uh, and catch my breath, prepare for the fall. Uh, but those are, you have to know your own cycles and then just work your calendar so that it maximizes uh, your health, your strength. And then last one, just uh, schedule time uh, to be for your people. And I remember, especially when I was a seminary president, I, uh, I would just regularly schedule breakfast meetings especially. Um, I didn't want to schedule dinner meetings because I want to be home with my family, but... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, early breakfast meetings, um, just a way to informally invest one-on-one with uh, key people or students of the seminary, um, or lunch meetings. Uh, just I, I would just uh, regularly schedule some time in the office just to catch up with people, hear their concerns, just make sure they were doing well, or schedule time just to do a walkabout where you just kind of see people in their environment where they work at their desk um, or out on the field where they're they're working uh, but just constantly saying uh, are are my people seeing me do my people have access to me uh, do they know I care about them uh, and uh, and don't just I, I've, I've seen so many times where leaders got so busy with their own work that they they had not scheduled time uh, to be around their people enough and 
and they they start making assumptions that aren't necessarily true and they don't they're not aware of discontent that's taking place and concerns that aren't getting back to them and so i've just found that uh, a healthy organization uh, a leader is going to just always schedule time that doesn't mean that necessarily every day that that's part of the schedule but on a you you do have a schedule and you are being intentional about making sure you're in touch with your folks your people and so lots uh, to say about that but again to challenge our listeners uh, when was the last time you took a serious look at your schedule your time uh are there time wasters in your life right now <clears throat> are there uh, is, is too much of your time being consumed by stuff that's secondary, not primary? Do you need to make some tweaks uh, so you can have maybe more time to focus on what matters most? Uh, is there something in your schedule right now that you could easily delegate to someone else and, and clean up some space uh, now so that you've got more time to do what you have not been able to do uh, for a while? Uh, if you've got a lot of unfinished work that keeps sitting there uh, in your stack, then it might well mean that you need to reorganize your time and your schedule uh, so that the important things are getting done. And uh, the less important things are being either uh, uh, eliminated or delegated uh, Mm -hmm. so that now you've got time to do what uh, you're paid the big bucks to do as a leader. Exactly. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to go through this. And uh, like we said at the beginning, we'll leave links to your book in the show notes. And until next time. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If this is something you enjoyed, it really makes a difference if you leave a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. We always love hearing from our listeners. So email us at podcast at blackme.org.